The New York Giants regular season kicks off this weekend, and I have a few bold predictions that I feel pretty good about. That and more on today's Locked on Giants podcast coming your way next. You are Locked on Giants, your daily New York Giants podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of the Locked on Giants podcast is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the promo code Locked on NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Hello, New York Giant fans, and welcome to another edition of the Locked on Giants podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast family, your team every day. My name is Patricia Traina, P Train, and it is Wednesday. Happy Hump Day. We are almost to the weekend, which means we are almost to opening kickoff. Yes, folks, it's here. Oh my gosh. Are you as excited as I am about it? This is just awesome. Anyway, on today's Locked on Giants podcast, I've got a pretty good show for you planned, I think. Uh, we're going to talk about some bold predictions that I have. Now, if you read me over on Giants Country, I posted an article about five bold predictions. I have five different ones for this show. I've been saving these exclusively for this show. Then the uh, depth chart was released. The initial unofficial depth chart was released. So a few takeaways on that. And then I'm going to end it kind of on a little down note, but it's got to be done. I'm going to call this segment cause for pause. There's a couple concerns that I have about this game. There's also one key that I am going to uh, cite. And it's actually a key that if you don't stick around to the end, It'll be on the YouTube shorts tomorrow. So that is today's agenda. And I want to thank you, as always, for making us your first listen of the day. Or if you watch on YouTube, your first watch of the day. And remember, the Locked on Giants podcast is free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. So shout out to all my everydayers, my newcomers, and everybody in between. Because you guys rock. And speaking of rocking, let's get going. Okay, we're going to talk about bold predictions. Now, I have five. Some of these are maybe not so bold. Some of them are, are considered bold. Um, these are all predictions that I think are going to come to fruition. And I'll tell you why I think they're going to come to fruition. And again, these are not the same ones that I published over on Giants Country. If you want to see that article, you can go check that out on GiantsCountry.com. All right, let's get started. Daniel Jones will have top 4,000 passing yards. All right. This would be the first time in his career he would accomplish that. Why do I feel Daniel Jones is going to top 4,000 passing yards? He's got speed now to work with. All right. He's got skill position players who are better in hauling in the ball and holding on to it. You know, Darren Waller alone putting that big body between himself and the ball. Um, Darius Slayton, believe it or not, who has been you know, had a problem with, with the drops these last few years, he has gotten better at that as well. Isaiah Hodgins, who's very sticky-handed with the ball. Jalen Hyatt, you're going to see a lot more deep shots this year. Now, not you know like 10 or 12 per game, but significantly more than what we've seen in the past. And those yards are going to rack up. They're going to add up, as are the shorter passes to the yards after the catch specialists, like a Paris Campbell or a Sterling Shepard or a Wandale Robinson once he's ready. So, or, and let's not forget Saquon Barkley. Let's not forget uh, Daniel Bellinger. So, folks, for me, 4,000 passing yards for Daniel Jones is definitely within reach. Now, I'd like to see him obviously get a few 300-yard passing games. Those were few and far to come in between last year and in years past. But I just think with this group of receivers and skill position players he has, if that offensive line gives him time, he's going to easily top that 4,000 mark for the first time in his career. All right, bold prediction number two. 
The New York Giants defense will be a top 10 unit across the board. That includes run defense, which I think will be significantly better. Last year, the run defense was 27th. That includes the passing defense, because I think the passing defense, the uh, the pass rush, the front seven, going to be a lot better. It's going to create a situation of pick your poison. Who are you going to double up if you're the opposing team? So I think this Giants defense, you know, just based on some of the stuff Wink Martindale showed in training camp, he's going to drive opposing offensive coordinators crazy. And I think along the way, this Giants defense will be a top 10 unit. All right. I'd be surprised if they don't crack top 10. I'm not saying they're going to be a top five, but I do think they can, you know, fall, finish somewhere between 10, nine, you know, somewhere in that range, you know, nine through 10 at the bottom of that range. So I'm looking forward to seeing if that comes to fruition. I think that could happen if that unit stays healthy. Bowl prediction number three. This should have really happened last year. I still don't understand why it didn't, but I think it's going to happen this year. Andrew Thomas is going to make the Pro Bowl. Now, for what it's worth, the Pro Bowl is not a big deal. You know, it's a popularity contest. I get that. You know, it's all about all pro. And Last year, Andrew Thomas, I think, was second team all pro. This year, he makes the Pro Bowl. I would be shocked if he doesn't. I mean, there's just no reason to keep him out. So, again, unless there's an injury involved, and I'm going to say this quite often, unless there are injuries, Andrew Thomas is set up to be a pro bowler this year. He just, you know, no matter who he went up against in the preseason, in, in training camp, he shut him down, and he went up against some top competition. So Andrew Thomas locked down left tackle. All right, bold prediction number four. The Giants will go four and two in the NFC East. Mm. So that means I have the Giants sweeping the commanders, who I'm still not sure about. You know, I, I wonder how their quarterback situation is going to play out down there. And I have the Giants splitting with Dallas and Philadelphia, two teams that in the past have swept the Giants very easily. I think the Giants can go 4-2 and two in the NFC East, which would be their first winning record in the division since 2020. Now, Brian Dable, the players, Joe Shane will tell you, hey, it doesn't matter, you know, we got to win as many games as possible. But listen, if you can win your division, that makes it a little bit easier your path to the playoffs, all right? It just it just makes it so much easier because the way the playoff seeding goes is top team versus bottom team, and it just works its way down. So you want to be amongst the top teams and, if, and have a chance, if you can, to win the conference. Now, I'm not saying the Giants are going to win the conference. I don't know that they'll even get into the playoffs, but I feel pretty good about them winning in the division because, remember, in 2020 – they just barely missed the playoffs. That in an NFC East that was really weak, but they still won it. You know, they I think they went four and two that year, if I'm not mistaken, in the NFC East. All right. Final bowl prediction. The Giants will have double digit wins this year. I'm predicting 10 and 7. I think that is very doable. Last year the Giants were um Nine, seven, and one still made the playoffs. I think they can win 10 games minimum. I'm aware that the schedule is difficult. I'm aware of the, you know, the logistical nightmare that is the schedule. But I really, you know, I haven't felt this good about a team coming out of training camp in quite some time. And I have questions. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to talk about those questions, the cause for pause in segment three. But I feel really good about this giant team and what I think they'll be able to accomplish. And I think double digit wins are possible. Now, along the way, as is always the case, it seems every year, there are going to be games that the Giants have no business winning that they win. And there are going to be games that they lose that they shouldn't lose. It happens every year. But overall, 10 wins minimum, in my opinion, is not a stretch for this team. 
All right. Those are my five bold predictions exclusively for this show. In the comments section, tell me if you agree or disagree and why. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're listening on our audio platforms, let me know what you think. You know, the information to contact me is in the show notes. All right. Coming up next, some initial depth chart thoughts. The depth chart was released today, unofficial depth chart. That's coming up right after this. Hey, Giant fans, if you're looking for your best shave ever, then you need to check out Harry's. From their legendary high-quality razors to skin products like exfoliating face wash and hydrating lotion, Harry's gives you a premium shave without the premium price tag and delivers their products straight to your door. My husband recently started using Harry's shaving products and he loves the clean, close shave he gets that allows him to go for days looking fresh without messing up his skin. Harry's starter set includes a five-blade German-engineered razor, weighted handle, foaming shave gel, and a travel cover. And you can schedule automatic refills for as low as $2, half of what you pay for other blades when you open an account. Harry's has the highest customer satisfaction in the shaving industry, and they're still offering a no-risk trial. Get your best shave ever this year with Harry's razors and skincare products. Get a $13 starter set for just $3 at harrys.com slash NFL. That's harrys.com slash NFL for a $3 starter kit. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Locked on Giants podcast. You got P-Train here or PT, whatever you want. Um, Patricia Trainer, your host, and we are talking about the New York Giants as we get closer to kickoff. It's coming. Oh, my gosh, it is coming. So excited. And, you know, speaking of being excited, tonight, Wednesday night, Locked on Giants Live, Trainer, Tana, and Dog, we're going to have a lot to talk about. And let me tell you something, folks. Dog in particular is really wound up. I mean, he is going to be on fire alone. I mean, I could just, Tana is usually pretty animated, but Dog on this show is just going to be off the charts. It's going to be a fun one. We're going to kick things off at 7.30 tonight, Wednesday. Hope you will swing by. Of course, this will be on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. Um, come on in. Take part in the communicate the community. You know, we always have a, a chat going on with all our participants who come in. You can also ask us questions and just, you know, we have a great old time. You know, we hang around, we talk football, we talk about the giants, which we all like to do. We have some laughs and somewhere along the line, you know, over the course of the two hours or so that we do the show, uh, we usually end up talking about food or something off topic just to kind of humanize it a little bit. But still, we have fun. And I hope you will check us out. You all are invited, of course. And uh, before I forget, I want to send a shout out to my subtext community. You guys are awesome. Um, we've got another Q&A coming up over the weekend. So you'll want to get your questions into me um, via the jot form link that I sent you, which you can find in the private videos that I sent to you. There's uh, information in the show notes. Uh, and next week, I believe we're going to start the film study. So we're just kind of waiting for, you know, some, something to really analyze. So I think that's the plan for next week. And I hope you will check that out. If you are interested in the subtext uh, community, you can visit joinsubtext.com slash locked on NY Giants for information. It is um, a free 14 day trial. If you like it, you uh, continue, do nothing. You pay $4.99 a month thereafter. If you don't like it, you cancel before your trial period is up and you own nothing, but it's free to try for 14 days. So I hope you'll check that out. Again, information is in the show notes if you want to take a look. All right. In this segment, we're going to talk about some initial depth chart takeaways. Now the New York Giants put out their weekly game release and they have an unofficial depth chart. The unofficial depth chart is actually created by the public relations staff, but it's based on kind of what you see in, you know, the practices and training camps. So a lot of times it's not that far off from what you actually, actually see on game day. But of course, you know, the coaching staff might put a wrinkle here or there. For example, they might play, you know, three tight ends as opposed to two, which is what's listed on the depth chart. 
But let's talk about a few things that are on this this uh, first rendition of the uh, depth chart. Um, first off, it lists Ben Bredesen as the starting left guard. No surprise there as far as I'm concerned. Ben Bredesen was, in my opinion, the second best offensive lineman the Giants had in the summer behind Andrew Thomas, right? And, and Bredesen, to my eyes, again, was the best interior offensive lineman the Giants had. Now, I know he rotated with, um, with Joshua Izudu. There was that quote-unquote competition. Um, will that rotation continue? It may. Um, I could see it continuing because, look, if you want Joshua Zudu to eventually be your starting left guard, which I do still think they do, um, you got to get him snaps. And it helps to get him live snaps. So I could see a situation where Zudu does get some snaps as part of a rotation. I would not necessarily do it against Dallas and that defensive front when you know Dan Quinn, the defensive coordinator, is going to throw everything, including the kitchen sink, at that offensive line. So, you know, there's going to be a time and place for it. Maybe you try it against Arizona or some of the other teams that maybe, you know, their defenses are still taking shape, but I would not do it against Dallas, If, but that's just me. Okay, another uh, notable on the depth chart, Micah McFadden listed as the Will linebacker. The Will linebacker, for those who don't know, is the weak side inside linebacker. All right. So, you know, we all wondered who would be ILB number two next to Bobby Okereke. We all thought, oh, maybe it'll be Isaiah Simmons. Looks like based on this depth chart, Isaiah Simmons is going to be a spot player. Um, I think he's going to be a pass rusher, going to be used in pass rushing situations. Micah McFadden can also rush the passer. He's a good blitzer. Um, not too bad in coverage. Did a decent job against the run. He's going to probably get some snaps, but, you know, it, it's not going to be exclusively him and Bobby Okereke. It's going to probably be a little bit of McFadden, a little bit of Isaiah Simmons. Um, you might see, I don't know, maybe you see an extra, uh, like a big nickel, so maybe Dane Belton gets in there, you know, in place of one of the linebackers. So, so it'll be a mixture, but I just thought it – it was worth noting that McFadden listed as the Will linebacker on the unofficial depth chart. Okay, the other uh, notable, Trey Hawkins III and Deontay Banks listed as the starting perimeter corners with Adoree Jackson listed as the main slot cornerback ahead of Darnay Holmes. Shouldn't be a surprise, you know, given that C.D. Lamb, the Dallas Cowboys' top receiver, plays a lot of his snaps in the slot, but, you know, I, I figured they would give their base defense and not maybe not tip things off, you know, as regarding what they were planning, but it's a tip off, you know, that, that particular configuration with Hawkins and Banks on the outside and Jackson in the slot in training camp practice didn't look that bad. Now, Obviously, you kind of take things a little bit with a grain of salt because you could say to yourself, okay, did they just look good because the other side didn't look good? Or what exactly happened? You know, what exactly did the coaches instruct the players to do? That said, I think Adoree Jackson definitely has the skill set to, to uh, flourish in the slot. I do not think you're going to see that configuration, um, you know, all the time. You will see it situ situations where – Maybe Darnay Holmes will be in the slot a few times against Dallas where and Jackson will move back to the outside. I think they will mix it up. And it all goes back to what I've been saying all along about playing matchup football. Now, on tomorrow's show, just to, just to give you a little heads up, tomorrow's show is crossover Thursday. So um, I had Marcus Mosier, who's co-host of Locked on Cowboys. And we talked about this and I mentioned CD lamb to him. And he said, you know, if I were the giants, I'd be more concerned about another receiver. And he told me who the receiver is. So I'm not going to spoil it. Um, Cause I want you to check out the crossover show with Marcus Mosier, which is going to drop uh, on Thursday just after midnight. But um, he just happened to mention that now it could be a, you know, just his opinion 
It could be, you know, that there's something to it. I don't know the answer, but um, that's why I don't think you're going to exclusively see a Dory Jackson in the slot from here on out. And I think a Dory even said as much. He said, look, it's going to depend on, you know, who we're facing again, matchup football, ladies and gentlemen, so important. All right. Coming up next, a segment I'm going to call cause to pause. What am I still concerned about? And then I have, I'm going to end the segment with a key that I think the Giants defense really needs to try and do a little bit better than what they did last year against the Cowboys. So that's coming up right after this. Hey, Giant fans, if you want to secure tickets to your favorite concert shows and sporting events without the stress, you need to check out Game Time, the fast and easy way to buy tickets right up until the day of the event. With amazing deals on last minute tickets and their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun that you're going to have. With Game Time, you not only get the lowest prices guaranteed, you also get to see the sight line in the venue with the tickets that you're looking to buy. And Game Time also offers event cancellation protection. And if you find tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. So go ahead and snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the promo code Locked On NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest prices, guaranteed. Term supply. Again, that's code locked on NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Hey, Giant fans, thanks again for making the Locked On Giants podcast your first listen every day. The Locked On Ultimate NFL Season Preview is here. This seven episode extravaganza brings opinions, analysis, and plenty of debate from all 32 of our Locked On NFL hosts with added insights from our national experts. It's a can't miss series before the season kicks off. Catch every episode on Locked On NFL on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. All right, Giant fans, welcome back to the Locked On Giants podcast. I'm your host, Patricia Trena, P Train. PT. And uh, we are talking Giants, Cowboys. We're going to get you ready for that big game. And as I mentioned in the previous segment, coming up on Thursday, we have the crossover show with Marcus Mosier, co host of Locked On Cowboys. And we had a really interesting discussion. I think you're going to like that show. And then again, tonight, Locked On Giants Live, 7 30 p.m. Eastern. Hope to see you there. We usually hang out for a couple of hours and we have a grand old time. So I'm looking forward to that. We're, you know, hanging out with Dog and Tana and the rest of you guys who usually show up. We usually have a nice little uh, steady group of people that come in. So that's coming up on the Locked On Giants podcast. All right. In this segment, cause for pause. What am I concerned about against the Dallas Cowboys team? Two things I'm going to give you. And then I'm going to cap it off with something that I think the Giants defense needs to step up and do. First thing, the Giants offensive line. Okay, hey, you knew I was going there, right? I think we're all concerned about the Giants offensive line. If you saw my show the other day when I did uh, For Better or For Worse or The Same, I think the one unit that I was still a little concerned about was the Giants offensive line. Now. Um, You've got a rookie center in John Michael Schmitz, obviously. You've got Evan Neal, who still needs to show that he can be consistent. Uh, looked a little bit better in the summertime, but still not quite there. Where you, uh, At least I feel he's not quite there, given the time he, he missed. But, of course, we'll see. Um, the left guard situation appears to be resolved. Mark Lewinsky, of course, needs to you know bounce back from the struggles he had last year. Dan Quinn, the defensive coordinator of the Cowboys, is going to throw everything at that Giants offensive line. I would not be surprised if we saw a lot of blitzes, a lot of twists, a lot of fancy stuff, confuse the heck out of them. And that's something that the Giants have had trouble with in the past is picking up those stunts and blitzes and all that stuff. So I'm a little concerned about that aspect of the game. Hopefully the Giants will be ready for that. And they will have answers. The other thing I remain concerned about with this Giants team, the coverage teams on specials. 
All right. We saw it last year at times, you know, the Seattle game being being one such instance. And there was another game. I forget which one it was, but uh, they had a, a, a big return um, in that game. We saw it in the preseason. The coverage teams are not getting down the field and they're not pinning the opponent deep. And that has to change. You know, it's bad enough that Jamie Gillen is, is good or seems good for one, you know, lousy punt per game where he out kicks out kicks the coverage but you know it, it would be nice if somebody the gunners whoever they're going to have if they get downfield and they make a play now the giants added um, a couple of guys to their practice squad they've got uh, taiwan jones who can play special teams has the experience i believe as a gunner cam sims who took um uh, Cole Beasley's spot on the uh, practice squad. Cole Beasley placed on IR on the practice squad. Those are two guys with special teams experience. So hopefully, you know, uh, when we go to look to see who the Giants elevate, I could see one or both of those guys getting elevated to help with the coverage units because the Giants have not been very good at that and they need to really fix that up. All right. I'm going to close this podcast out with something that I feel the Giants need to do on defense. It's something that they didn't do against the Cowboys last year. Uh, and that is they've got to get quarterback Dak Prescott to the ground with the pass rush. They've got to finish their pass rushes and sack Dak Prescott. Now I'll give you some numbers real quick. And by the way, I have a short coming out on this tomorrow um, here on the YouTube channel. So the Giants, uh, or actually Prescott was under pressure last year, 31.4% of the time, completed 50.5% of his passes for seven touchdowns versus six interceptions. Now against the Giants in week 12, because remember Prescott didn't play in the first meeting, which was week three, Cooper Rush did. The Giants in week 12 pressured Prescott 64.5% of the time, but failed to get home on the sacks. And Prescott went on to throw two touchdowns to two interceptions while completing 57.9% of his pass attempts. So if you're the Giants, mission is simple. Get the get to Prescott. And the Cowboys offensive line, they've got some injuries that they're, they're waiting to see how they play out. And, of course, we'll have injury update information for you um, as I get it. Uh, but they've got to finish these pass rushes. Get Prescott on the ground, whatever it takes, you cannot let him have all day to throw uh, to his receivers. All right. That, ladies and gentlemen, will do it for this edition of the Locked on Giants podcast. Again, don't forget tonight, Locked on Giants Live, 7.30 p.m., train and taint a dog. Tomorrow, the crossover Thursday show with Marcus Mosier of Locked on Cowboys. Can't wait to see you tonight live. Thank you for tuning in to the Lock on Giants podcast. So until later on, folks, have a great day. We will see you hopefully tonight at 730.